Hey guys, your humble host, or Kayla if you prefer. Anyway, today I'm going to do a response video to one of my video subscriptions. Uh, Cognitive Thought. I have followed this guy for quite a while. I've tried with him, finding him to be decent. I like the dude. I like his content. Um, however, there's a video he put out, as you can see on screen, that kind of rubbed me the wrong way, and I feel like he kind of jumped the gun just a bit. So I will be doing a video response to this. Now I've already sat through and watched this video once so I can understand from a point where he's coming from but at the same time I feel like he's missed some major points as well as possibly hasn't gone through um, the type of trauma as this woman has in the video and as myself a sexual abuse victim I want to respond to this in the best way I can and just kind of bring some points to light. So without further ado, here we go. Hi YouTube, this is Cognitive Thought here and I hope you're all having a great week. On today's show, we're going to be looking at a video uploaded by Boldly called This Is My Assault Story, Hashtag Me Too. You ready for this? Play the video. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to skip what I consider filler content and jump to um, a minute and 22 seconds into the video. Pretty much at the beginning of the video, um, Cognitive Thought describes what the video's on as well as you will see a woman named Kate come into view and ask, hey, you see anything different? Let's look around the room. And she starts talking about what she wants to do with um, a mattress and box spring set that she has propped up against the wall and how she wants to use it for the hashtag me too. Let me find my appropriate place here. Okay. So there we go. Me too. Movement. What? So you've thought about all of these options of disposal for your mattress, but instead you've decided to use your mattress in the me too movement? A little backstory. I was raped a few years ago, and without getting into the specifics, I'm not sure that that really matters. Well, Kate, I think the specifics are important when it comes to asking strangers to believe your story, but please, go on. Not necessarily, as long as she's not prating, uh, prating the issue around it. Sometimes the specifics aren't always necessary. Now, if she was making big hoopla of it, as you can say Mattress Girl was, or a lot of other women do, but she's just giving context as to what she's doing with the mattresses as well as she's using them for the hashtag. So in a sense, not really, you don't always need the details, though I can see where you're coming from because the false rape accusations, so I can see that point of view, but in this case, they're not needed. I kept sleeping on the mattress that I was raped on. See, this is confusing to me. When I think of rape, I see it as a traumatic experience for someone to go through. If somebody raped you in your own bed and you didn't live with them, don't you think you'd have a period of time where you, I don't know, slept on the sofa to be away from the room and bed where you went through such a traumatic experience? Or maybe that's just me. Uh... Okay, so something I do want to point out because that is an excellent point. But with sexual abuse, with being raped, taking advantage in that sort of way, each person is effective differently and some people will stay in the same bed or area that the traumatic event happened with or hold on to the thing that's linked to that trauma. And that's because either they're holding on to the shame, they can't let go what happened, and a lot with sexual abuse just in general because shame does creep into where the person feels they deserved it, they feel like they don't deserve anything better because they're broken, damaged goods, and I'm speaking from experience. So with her sleeping in that mattress, to me that's symbolic of her saying, hey, you know what, well I deserve this, this is all I'm gonna get, um, I don't deserve anything better. So that could be how she felt once again though. With rape and sexual abuse in general, it affects each person differently and each person will respond differently. Now some people will avoid the area altogether, but in Kate's case, she held on to the thing that was attached to the trauma. It is normal for sexual abuse victims to do that. Let's continue. I am going to move this mattress into my front yard tomorrow morning, and I'm going to write hashtag me too real big 
with Sharpies. And then I'm gonna... Okay, so I get that you're not fully understanding why she's doing this. With that sort of trauma, it can be very hard to work through, and sometimes victims don't work through that or don't recover for that for well over 10 years because it's so traumatizing, it's so degrading, it's still something from you, and on top of that with sexual abuse, again, in general, it steals your voice. So some people are not able to voice what happened for a very, very long time, so when the hashtag trend came along with me too, I feel like this is Kate's way of trying to let go of what happened, work through it, because I will say that sexual abuse, trying to work through it, trying to, as in a sense, rewire your brain from what the trauma did, is very, very difficult and can take many, many years to unravel the side effects and ramifications that came from that traumatic event. Leave a bunch of Sharpies and a note to welcome other people to write a message share anything they want. This seemed like a better idea than my other options. So you think that taking your mattress outside to be a billboard to your community about how much of a victim you are is a better option than donating it, destroying it, or even throwing it away? Not only this, but you plan to leave notes to encourage people to sign your rape mattress. What? I think I kept... Okay, so another thing here too, because I had this difficulty growing up from my own abuse. Um, when you are sexually abused, like I said, it takes away your voice. It becomes very hard to talk about and you feel very much alone because it's something that's not really voiced. It's something that not a whole lot of people talk about. So by her putting her mattress out with a hashtag me too, she doesn't want to feel alone. I will say from experience, Without getting too emotional, that sort of thing can make you feel very much alone. And it does because, especially when you don't know how to explain it or how to talk about it, you struggle alone. You, it is a very dark, lonely road when you feel like you are all alone with what happened to you. So with the hashtag me too, Especially with her putting it out in her front yard with the mattress, she wanted to see if there's other victims so she wouldn't feel alone. I will tell you that anybody else can relate to this. Anybody who has gone through that, rape, sexual abuse, molestation, anything, will feel very much alone in that struggle. Sleeping on this mattress because I still had so much anger and shame that I was holding on to. See, and this is something I brought up in the beginning of the video. Once again, I'm going to reiterate here, with sexual abuse victims, doesn't matter what age, there is shame, deep, deep shame that comes in and creeps in, and it makes you feel like damaged goods, it makes you feel like that's all you deserve with what happened, it feels like it's your fault, so you hold on to what you can of yourself, uh, so to speak. Sorry, I'm having a hard time with this. Um, but anyway, I did bring this up in the beginning of the video and she just reiterated what I just said. It is the shame holding on to the shame because we feel like we don't deserve any better. So by her holding on to the mattress, she held on to what she felt like was the only thing that she deserved or the only thing that she felt like she was going to get in that sense. Hopefully I'm explaining this in the right way the best I can. Like I said, this isn't very easy. And... I'm not going to do it anymore. Good for you! I'm over this. Good for you! I am- Okay, so, once again, I understand where you're coming from, Cog, but trying to get rid of that one thing that's attached to the trauma, whether it be a toy, a mattress, or something of that nature, it is very, very difficult because, in a sense, you were getting rid of something that is a weight. And with sexual abuse victims, you become attached to that weight. You be, like I said, it is something that you feel as though it's the only thing that you deserve and can really relate to. So by her putting it out once again in the front yard with the hashtag #MeToo, she doesn't want to feel alone, which sexual abuse can 
very much do. And this is her way of letting go. This is her way of getting rid of that weight, which is not an easy task, mind you. I'm over letting this control my life. I really don't get these delicate snowflakes that say shit like, a mattress was controlling my life. It's fucking pathetic. It's not pathetic, and once again, it doesn't sound like you've been through the trauma, which I'm thankful for, because it's it's horrendous. It is a living hell sometimes. But once again, this is her weight that she's getting rid of, her shame, her saying, you know what, I deserve better, what happened to me wasn't my fault, I deserve more, I am more than just damaged goods. Like I said, I really hope I'm explaining this properly, I really am. I got Sharpies and I have puppy paint, so I'm gonna leave this out for people. Right now I'm feeling pretty nervous about doing this. It was so important for me to know that I wasn't alone and... Something I did bring up because it's such, it's such an important point. Because for those of you who have been on my channel for a while, who have responded to my poem videos, who have walked a similar road to I have and probably am still still walking that same road you know exactly what she's talking about it sucks because we can't really relate what we've been through with people who haven't it's it's like talking to a brick wall yeah they can try to sympathize all they want but when it comes to our struggles because there's many many struggles that come from being sexually abused raped uh, molested Ah, uh, it is so hard to voice the struggles, and you do feel alone, and this is something I brought up once again at the beginning of the video, and Cog, this is something I want you to understand. Now, like I said, I understand your point of view. In a way, I agree with it, and it makes logical sense. It's, there's nothing wrong with your logic, but at the same time, to a, with a sexual abuse victim, myself included, normal logic is not there. It's just not. You're not alone. There is help out there. There are others who have been through this. I'm not sure that you ever feel completely healed, but you make progress. And you don't, because there's always a piece of you that's missing, that there's always a piece of you that was stolen, that went with someone else that wasn't supposed to, and you heal up to a certain point, but you're always going to have that small twinge, that small crack, because it's just someone took advantage of you and took something of you that they weren't supposed to. I kind of feel like I want to cry. <laughs> I kind of want to smile. I have a lot of emotions going through me that I'm having a hard time identifying, but I think it feels good. I think one of the, the biggest parts for me was writing underneath me too, on this bed, in my house, on a second date. And let me just bring more iteration to this point, because I did bring up this earlier too, is with sexual abuse in general, it still is your voice. Um, because you don't know how to talk about it at first, you're trying to process what happened, and with her putting this on the bed, she is voicing what happened, she is taking away the power that it has over, and I know some people are probably giggling at me right now, but for those of you who have been sexually abused, rape molested, know exactly what I'm talking about. So, by her stating what exactly happened, and when it happened, she's saying that this is not going to have any power over me, anymore and Cog I really really hope you can understand where I'm coming from from a certain point so I'm doing my best here well there's nothing like knowing the mattress you're about to write on is a rape mattress this one again it's her symbol her weight that she's getting rid of and not letting it have say over her life anymore because anything associated with that trauma whether it be smell toy clothes whatever it serves as a weight of her holding on to the shame. Fortunate experience I think always stays with you and there are constantly new ways in which it presents itself in situations, in conversations, in your mind. And I think it's important to recognize that and find ways to empower yourself and not be afraid and not be ashamed of what happened because it's not your fault. Correct. If a person has been raped, it isn't their fault. 
Furthermore, if you are raped, you should report your rape to the police immediately so they can start an investigation. This is the best way you can empower yourself after being raped. Don't be like Kate, who sleeps in the bed she was raped in and holds onto it for six months, with her best plan for disposal not actually being disposal, but more a written reminder and billboard to the world that she has been raped. Seriously, I have no idea what this will accomplish, but let's skip forward to what the mattress looks like at the end of the day. Again, as I said, it is her symbol. With sexual abuse victims, they hold on to that shame. Some people are able to come, oh, excuse me, overcome that more easily than others, but with certain people, it takes years, years to let go of what happened, and that object that was associated with that traumatic event can be held on to for years because, as I said, it symbolizes to them that shame, that this is all that they're going to get, it's what they deserve, they are damaged goods, um, they are no better than what happened to them. So I really hope I'm explaining this, and I know I'm sounding like a broken record, but I really feel like you jumped the gun with this video, and I'm really trying to iterate why she held onto the mattress, because I can relate to this. I really can. Um, I used to have a stuffed cat. Uh, my parents got rid of it when I was in grade school, whatever, but I held on to this thing, and it was associated with the trauma that I went through. Granted, I have memory repression, but even still, I held on to this thing for quite a while because it was it made me feel safe. So that could be in another sense with the mattress. Um, even though she was raping it, could have made her feel safe because it's what she came comfortable with, if that makes sense. And if not, I do apologize. This is really hard to explain. Okay, it's the end of the day. Let's go see what this mattress looks like. Oh my god, people did write on it. Yeah, I, I'm a little stunned. I didn't know what to expect. Well, I expected exactly what's on that mattress. Now, in a moment, we'll take a look at all of the individual messages, but first we get to meet Kate's friends, who also have their own rape stories to add to the mattress. What? Once again, with the mattress, with uh, various messages written on there, it's nice to feel that we're not alone. Sexual abuse, sexual assault, molestation is not something that a lot of people talk about, much more the effects, what it does to a person, because the shame is deep, the ramifications are deep, what happens to that person, their self-worth, their integrity, if you will, their confidence, all goes in the toilet. So seeing the messages from other people is very, very important to a sexual abuse victim. And I will say, I kind of wish that I saw this when I was younger. Would have helped a lot. I have you feel right on it? Yeah, I left. This is amazing. Notes oh. out here. People have just been writing on it? I put it out this morning because I've... This is amazing. Can I write on it? Yeah. I love this. See, this is another thing that doesn't make sense to me. If Kate has friends around her who have also apparently experienced a trauma of rape, why aren't they giving her advice and attempting to help her get through it, instead of encouraging this lunacy of holding onto a mattress for six months, only to turn it into a public message board for her local community to write on? It's fucking ridiculous. Anyway, so out of all the messages left on the mattress, we- Okay, so... Sorry, that was a bad place to pause, but no, it's not ridiculous, and you don't know how she's been dealing with it, you don't know if her friends have been telling her to get rid of the mattress, we don't have that context. As I have stated, each sexual abuse victim deals with it differently. The ramifications, the side effects is very, very deep, no matter the age, and each person will respond to it differently, each person will cope with it differently. Some people help will hold on to the object or the item that's associated with the trauma, others will get rid of it. And as I said, for someone who has been through that sort of trauma, your logic makes sense. To a normal person, it, may, it makes sense. Toss out the stuff, get, get rid of the presence with it, all the stuff, just get rid of it, be done with it. I get you. I agree with you. But at the same time, with a victim of rape, a sexual abuse, molestation, 
we don't have that logic. That logic doesn't make sense to us because of how the traumatic event rewired our brains. So, I get you. I get where you're coming from. We have Kate's own message, the two messages of her friends, a message that says hashtag support, and two other possible rape victims with messages like hashtag me too at volleyball practice, and another that says my mom too whilst walking down the street, my sister too at my wedding. There is also one from a little big that seems to read hashtag me too, I his school, whatever that means, and finally we have five inevitable troll comments that read hashtag me too, pussy stay dripping from Lady EK, hashtag me too, my first gynecologist exam, hashtag me too, and my harasser had to pay me $300,000, hashtag me too, suck my ass, Tim loves Tyler blog, and finally, hashtag me too, I have parent issues? Still, that's the response that Kate got on her rape mattress, so let's see what she thinks about this. Again, it's people voicing the experience. Something with sexual abuse, again, and I know I'm sounding like a broken record, the more that you're able to voice what happened, and I'm not saying play the victim or prayed around, but what I'm saying is the more that you're able to tell your story, the more that you're able to say, hey, this this is what happened to me, here's how I dealt with it, the less power that that trauma, that incident has over you. Because the worst thing for a sexual abuse victim is losing their voice and losing the ability to talk about and express properly what happened. Without that ability, because I can relate, um, it is very hard for us to deal with it without having our voice. And I'm not saying people silence us, no. What I'm saying is, with sexual abuse, once again, especially when you're at a young age, it is hard to process because you don't fully understand what happened. Now, in Kate's case, rape is still a hard thing to process because you don't understand why it happened, you don't understand why they did it, why they even went to that level. So, once again, them writing on the mattress, me too, is them giving voice to their story and taking away power from that event. Sexual abuse can take years, years to freaking heal from because of how deep, how degrading what it does to you as a person and as a whole. It's pretty amazing the impact that one person can have on another. It matters to be heard. So that's Kate's last words on this video, and I think she feels either people have made an impact on her, or she's made an impact on others. Either way, it's just a bunch of feel-good nonsense that I don't really care about. What I do find strange though, is that now Kate only has two options. She either holds onto the bed as a badge of her victimhood, which would be weird as fuck, or she'll be getting rid of the mattress by donating it, destroying it, or even throwing it away, one of the options that wasn't good enough before, but was always going to be the eventuality of this pity party. It's not a pity party, and it's not a feel good thing, and I know I just spoke up my voice, so I'm not gonna go on this long tangent again, but it's people being able to voice their traumatic experience, and that is so freaking important, especially to a sexual abuse victim, because it takes away your voice, and sometimes it could take years to get that voice back. Not because people are silencing them, that's not where I'm going, but people who have been through this experience, rape, molestation, uh, anything related knows exactly what I'm talking about. For me, it took quite a few years for me to voice my own struggles, my own, uh, how should I say, side effects of the sexual abuse that happened to me. It took quite a few years, and it's still hard for me to do so because there's still stuff on my end that I haven't dealt with because it's just like, no, um, because it's so freaking hard and it's so, in a way, degrading. But anyway, that is the end of his video. I'm not angry with him. Um, in a way, I can see his logic. His logic to a normal person does make sense. Why would you hold on to something that you were traumatized with? Toss it out. Get rid of it. Get it out of your house. But with people who have been through something like that, normal logic, 
goes out the window. I, it's fact. Um, I know that with my poem videos, I've had quite a few people respond saying, hey, you know what, I've had this happen to me, or I can relate, blah, 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 blah. So I do know what I'm talking about, and for those of you who are on my channel who have responded to those poems, you can really relate. So, as I said, I'm not responding to cognitive thought. I can very much see where he's coming from, but I feel because it sounds like he hasn't gone through that sort of event, which... Thank God, because no, um, that's not something I ever want to wish on a person. Because, like I said, it could sometimes be a living hell. Um, but I wanted to bring some points to the light why I feel like Kate did it. Use the hashtag Me Too to do it and hold on to the mattress, and who knows what she's gonna do with it. Af if it were me, after getting those responses. I'd probably cut the small cloth out that was written all over me too and toss the rest of the garbage out. I mean, I wouldn't hold on to in a big box spring just to have people respond to either. Better yet, take a photo, snapshot, take a photo of it, put it on a Facebook, like, hey, this is what I did, the mattresses are now gone, but I'd keep a photo at least. I wouldn't hold on to the darn things. And why she didn't toss it out to begin with, I've already explained in the video and how she used the hashtag to deal with her traumatic event, or rather, begin to move past it. But anyway, as I said, I'm going to put the link to Cog's video in the description. Go check him out. He has good content. This is just a video I feel like he jumped the gun with, with not having full understanding of the video he was covering, but like I said, go check him out. Nice guy. He does streams. Um, follow him on Twitter. Decent fellow. But anyway, that is my response video. Um, leave your comments and thoughts below. Please don't go harass him or leave nasty comments, um, especially for those of you who are subscribed to me who have been through something similar. Not everybody's gonna understand. But anyway, y'all have a nice night.